Omaha, good morning to you all. Welcome, welcome to the winter past. It hasn't gotten cold yet. We haven't had snow, and if you hold your fingers just right, it will never snow. I'm lying, and that is not the truth. This morning, I want to talk to you about a lesson that every one of us need to learn how to discipline our prayer life. How to discipline our prayer life. Every one of us need discipline to get answers from God. Every one of us need discipline to learn how to do something for God. When you talk about discipline, we talk about discipline in sports. If you want to win the Super Bowl, if you want to win a great championship, you have to have a disciplined coach and disciplined players. And they have to play the right way all the time. It's not enough just to have talent. Some of the most talented teams have not won the Final Four in basketball. It's always the team that's best disciplined. And it's not enough to have knowledge of the game and to know everything. Knowledge won't do it, nor will desire. I want to win. I want to do something for God. You must discipline yourself. Now, you have to understand that prayer goes against the flesh. Prayer goes against the flesh. Listen to the words of the Lord Jesus. The night before he died, he was facing what he knew was coming. He knew that the stripes were coming, that the flogging was coming, the crucifixion was coming. He knew that death was coming. And so he went to pray. And he really prayed, oh, Father, I don't want this. I don't like the hurt. I don't like the suffering. Let this cup pass from me. And he came back. His disciples were supposed to be praying with him, but they went to sleep on the job. And they were just taking a 40 winks. But listen what he said to them. What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And I think he understood that many times we go to sleep when we should be praying. Many times our mind wonders when we should be praying. Jesus understood that the flesh is not always a good friend of prayer. When you talk about prayer, when you go to pray, there are many misconceptions about prayer. We think that um, uh, God will hear us just because we are effective. We, we begin to pray. I want to challenge you to be disciplined, to pray always, to get answers to your prayer. We think that God is not all powerful, and some of you think that God can't do anything. God can do amazing things when you begin to ask Him. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. During the first year here at Liberty, we started with 154 students. We didn't own any property. We were using the old Thomas Road Sunday school classes. They had a lounge, we were using the lounge. We used the gym, we used their kitchen facilities, their cafeteria, we used everything. We had nothing. And Dr. Falwell stands up and says, we are going to fast and pray for a million dollars. At the time, the church's budget was a half a million. We had never seen a million before. We were going to ask God to give us twice as much as ever before. Fast and pray for a million dollars. I was the leader and I was scared. I had never fasted before. I said, Lord, what's going to happen if I start fasting and I don't eat? What's going to happen if I get in front of my classes and throw up? I'll be embarrassed. Huh. Oh, Lord, maybe I'll pass out on the floor. What's going to happen? I was more concerned about what would happen to me. So I kept praying, oh God, help me get through. Oh God, help me get through. And I might have added a PS and give us a million dollars. But I was more concerned about getting through than getting the million dollars. Well, it came, we fasted on a Monday. It's called a Yom Kippur fast. A Yom Kippur fast is Yom Day Kippur Atonement. It's from sundown to sundown. And Dr. Falwell always called a Monday fast. Why? 
because on Sunday we could challenge the people. They knew exactly what they were praying for. The goal was up there, we're going to fast, and we would start Sunday night and not eat. And then breakfast on Monday, not eat. And then lunch on Monday, not eat. And when the sun went down, we would eat. Now, that's been my pattern. This past Monday, I fasted. The previous Monday, I'm, I'm fasting from now until election day that God would give us his man in the White House. This election's coming up as a, as a, ter- it's a ter- terrific challenge. Either go forward or go backwards. And so what can I do? One person, you can make a difference. I'm going to fast and pray. Dr. Falwell said, we're going to pray for a million dollars. Well, I want you to know we came, we fasted, we prayed. And you know, it wasn't so bad. I went through a whole day. I didn't eat. I didn't throw up. I didn't faint. It wasn't so bad. The only thing I got out of my first fast was what I prayed for. Oh, Lord, help me make it through. And you know what? I made it through. Now, Dr. Falwell was praying for a million dollars. I want to challenge you to begin fasting and praying. I found something going through my files, and it's too small for you to see, but it's a little notebook. When I was a freshman at Columbia Bible College in 1950, I began a disciplined prayer notebook. And this notebook has pictures in it of missionaries, pictures of a young man I led to Christ, and a day-by-day diary, and I began asking God for things And I began to write down, I'm going to challenge you today to start a prayer list, to write down the things you ought to pray for. Why? Because you forget or you don't really focus. But when you pray with a reminder and you pray with a list, I have these lists that go back to 1950. I still have these lists all in a file folder. I went to Columbia Bible College, and I wanted to be a preacher, so I said, hmm, I want to find a good wife. And I began to ask different girls to go out with me. Would you go out on Friday night? Well, I got to wash my hair. (laughs) Who in the world washes hair on Friday night? (laughs) I got to study. I'm smart enough to know that that's a no. (laughs) No, I don't want to go out with you. I don't want to go out with you. So I have a sheet of paper that says, I wrote down, I looked around and said, Lord, I want, to, I want to date the best looking girl in school. I want a girl who's got good grades. I want a girl who's um, good looking. Uh, and it would help if her father had a lot of money, you know. <laughs> and it would also help if she had a good library, a lot of books, you know. And so I began, I wrote down, Lord, I, go to, and I looked around. And I I said, oh, I would never ask that girl for a date. She's just too good looking. She she wears expensive clothes. Her father's a a contractor. She'd never go out with me. So I wrote down Ruth Forbes. And I began to bang on, Lord, bang on the windows of heaven. Lord, do it, do it, do it, you know. (laughs) And I can just imagine God in heaven sitting there saying, who's banging on the window, angels? And the angel said, it's Elmer again. What's he want this time? He wants a date. Oh, good night, give it to him, you know. (laughs) So I I walked up to this Ruth Forbes. I said, Ruth, would you go out with me on Friday night? She said, sure, why not? I want you to know, when I get an answer to prayer, I write, amen, amen. (laughs) If it's really a big answer, it gets caps in capital letters, amen, amen and a couple of exclamation points. I mean, amen. I want you to know, 10 months later, she went from the middle of my prayer list to the top. I'm gonna to ask her to marry me. I got, you know, that's a big choice. Matter of fact, it's funny. I was looking at, I had forgotten. Lord, I didn't do it today because I got cold feet. You didn't know that, Ruth. <laughs> but I, I was gonna do it a week ahead. <laughs> and so I wrote in my, I said, Lord, 
I didn't do it because I was scared. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, it's scary. <laughs> you're scared to death and you're passionate in love and you got these two feelings beating in your heart. And so I was going to do it and I didn't do it. And so September the 27th, 1951, I got her in the middle of the whole foyer of the women's dormitory. I knew the bell was going to ring at two o'clock and she had to go up. They had a rule that she had to go and take a nap on, dumb rule, go take a nap on Sunday afternoon. And so she had to leave at two. My time was getting away. I walked her over, sat her on a couch. I knelt down. I had a rose, gave her a rose. And I said, Ruth, will you be my wife? She said, sure, why not? <laughs> It didn't happen that way. I think she said, uh-huh. <laughs> now, I want to challenge you today to ask. Make a prayer list of the things that you're asking from God. Now, you must ask, and let me give you some conditions. Not everything you ask will you get. The first condition, you must ask. You must ask. Now, the best girl in school may want to date you guys. But if you don't ask her, she won't go out with you. And so you must ask. You have not, the Bible says, because you ask not. Now, folks, <laughs> I want to challenge some of you to ask for money. I want to ask, I want to challenge some of you to ask for wisdom to pass a course. I want some of you to ask God to use you in a speaking situation, a music situation. I want you to ask God to lead you. Ask God because God will answer. Now, let me give you two or three conditions. First of all, you must ask the second one, ask according to Scripture. Now, if you abide in me and my words, the Scriptures abide in you, you shall ask what you will. Wow, anything, anything. Now, the older men on the platform remember the name Janis Joplin, big rock and roll singer back in the 70s. And she had a hit record, Lord, I want a Mercedes. All my friends have Porsche. And sometimes the prosperity people think, ask for the best car. Now, when you begin to ask, ask according to Scripture. What does the Word of God say? Not everything that you ask. You ask that you may consume it upon your lust. And sometimes it's our lust, it's our old nature, and we're asking for money, or the big car, or we're asking for the big scholarship. We're asking for something, and it just comes out of our human desires and lust. And so we must ask according to the Word of God. There's a third thing you must ask according to as you serve Him. The Bible says, as you are serving him and you ask, you're more likely to get your answers to prayer. You did not choose me, Jesus said, but I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And then whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. So as you're going out to serve in your Christian service, as you're going out to witness for Jesus Christ, as you're going out to do a, a, a servant ministry. Whatever you're going to do as you're serving Christ, you can ask and he will bless you. This morning, I was reading through the list of people at a little church. When I was 19 years old, I was pastoring Westminster Presbyterian Church in Savannah, Georgia. Why? Because when I was in a Bible college, I got thrown in a dorm with a bunch of WW2 veterans. These old men all had country churches. And we'd get together and pray, like the prayer leaders lead you. And all these men were praying about their church. And so here I am, a 19-year-old kid. I said, oh God, give me a church. Oh God, give me a church. Be careful what you ask for. God may give it to you. And so when I was 19, I went home to Savannah, Georgia. There was a closed church, but a lady had a key. 
she wanted to start a Sunday school, and this lady said, we're going to start a Sunday school, will you be our preacher? So yeah. So every weekend I went home and preached, and this little church began to grow from five ladies to 20 to 30. We got it all the way up to 65 and 70 people. How do I know? This morning I was looking at the numbers of people that came to the services. And I was looking at a list of the people who got saved in that church. Way back then, as I was serving and praying, God put his power. So Jesus said, as you serve me, bear fruit, then you can ask what you will. Condition number four, ask according to God's will. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John 5, 14, ask according to the will of God. My mother and my father met at a dance. As a little kid, they would drag me to all the taverns of Savannah, Georgia. And I can always remember sitting in the booth watching mom and dad dance, and mom carried the whiskey bottle because of revenuers, and they would never frisk a woman. And so as they came looking, they'd always look at dad, and she... They would pour the, I can remember my mom and dad getting drunk. And then mother realized we ended up in a house, a shotgun house, not a very nice house. And I, we didn't have much and dad was drinking it all up. He'd get paid every Saturday about 12 noon. He worked for 42 years at White Hardware Company in Savannah, Georgia. And Mr. White would come out. He'd walk over to this old cash register. It had about seven drawers one cash drawers, one for each salesman. He'd punch my dad's cash drawer and take out t five $10 bills, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then he would take two ones and give my dad $52. And he'd sign this, he'd sign it. When I was a kid, there was no social security, no withholding tax. You got, you got paid exactly what you were worth. No withholding at all. And, um, Mother would come and she'd wait. And soon as he got his money, boy, she'd go forward. She said, I need this, I need rent, I need telephone money, I need light money. And he, she would cause a stir. And all the salesmen ran away and hid. And she would just stomp and she was lightning. She was white lightning. She was so, she had to get that money. And they would fuss right, Aaron, you're causing, you're embarrassing me. She said, well, give me the money. She said, all right, you'll drink it up if I don't get it. And so he would give her money. And soon as he le she left, I would walk over, hey, Dad, give me a quarter. He'd reach in his pocket, he'd pull out a quarter. I could see him go like this, uh-huh, there you go. And I get the quarter, and I go to the movies. Now, back in the early 40s, you got into a movie for a dime. You got popcorn for a nickel. It still cost a nickel, a nickel a kernel. <laughs> and, and I'd get a, uh, I'd get a Dr. Pepper and a bag of peanuts, all for a quarter. And I pour the peanuts into the Dr. Pepper and shake it up and squirt it into my mouth. They said, why? Because little boys did that, just for a blast. My wife said to me, why did your dad give you the money and fuss with his wife. I said, you know, he loved for me to have a good time. He loved to go to movies and he wanted me to enjoy myself. So he always gave me a quarter. She said, did you ever ask for more than a quarter? I said, no. She said, why? I said, I knew what he would give me. Did you ever ask for just a dime? I said, no, I know what he wanted to give me. You ought to know God's will. When you pray according to God's will, what he wants to give you, you can ask and God will answer your prayers. So I'm gonna challenge you. Number four, to pray according to God's will. And number five, ask because you are clean from sin. Sometimes you begin to ask and sin blocks the way. When we talk about sin blocking the way, we know that God does not hear sinners. We know that sin blocks. And so if you have sin in your life, and you begin to ask and you don't get it, it's not God's fault. Look inside, oh Lord, cleanse me, forgive me, use me to pray. When we pray, 
Always begin your prayers. Learn to pray with worship. Every morning when I get up, this morning when I got up, even before I get out of bed, I throw the covers down and I worship God. I pray the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed holy be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me strength, give me bread this day. Lord, give me bread to make it through all the things I've got to do. Forgive my debts, my trespasses. I will forgive those who sin against me. Lord, don't lead me into temptation. I can find it myself. And then I pray, Lord, deliver me from the evil one who wants to eat me up like a lion. For thine art the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I always begin, holy be your name. I can turn a motel room into a sanctuary. Now a sanctuary is where God lives. And when you think in terms of a temple sanctuary, God lived in the Old Testament tabernacle and temple. That's where God lives. And I can get God to come and live in a motel room. Some mornings I get up early in a motel room and I start praying my prayer list. I've got my business before God and it looks like my prayers are bouncing off the wall. And I have to stop and remind myself, Jesus said, the Father seeks worship. What does God want from you? The one thing he can't give himself, God cannot worship himself. Self-praise doesn't do anything to the one giving the praise. And so God wants you to praise him, you to worship him. And so I begin many mornings, if, I, if I'm not getting through, I stop. Lord, I worship you. And I begin to worship him with his many names because the Lord's Prayer said, hallowed be thy name. And I'll say, Lord, you are bread. Lord, you are light. Lord, you are door. Lord, you are the good shepherd. Lord, you are the resurrection. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, you are so many things. I praise God with his many names and I find he comes to receive my worship. There was a 19, I think it was 88 movie called Field of Dreams. There was that farmer in Iowa. He kept hearing a voice and these voices he kept hearing said, if you build it, what will happen? If you build it, they will come. Let's turn that into a Christian motto for us. If you worship him, he will come. And folks, you can, you can enjoy the atmospheric presence of God because he comes to live within your life. Make a prayer list. I want to challenge all of you to make a prayer list of people. Make a prayer list of people you want to pray for, for the unsaved. Every night my wife and I begin to pray and we have a list of unsaved people we pray for. Usually I take the initiative and I pray for each one of those. And then when my wife prays, she said, Lord, I agree with Elmer. For their salvation, save them. And so I want you to pray for unsaved people. Pray for your friends. On my list, long before I met my wife, I prayed, Lord, Lord, for the, for the wife I'm going to marry, for the salvation of the children I'm going to have, and Lord, I pray for my leadership. And just this morning, I was looking at a statement I made, Lord, do not give me leadership before I'm ready to receive it. And so you ought to pray these things and write down and start journaling with God. Some of the greatest men of God it started journals, and we can read their journals and benefit from them. Whether you're talking about Luther, Wesley has about 22 volumes, about this big on the shelf. I spoke at a conference two summers ago, and this volume used to cost $400 for the 22. Then he got down to 100, and they said, we'll sell you that volume for $50. And so I'm thinking, do I want to pay $50 for 22 volumes on the journals of John Wesley? And then it dawned on me, no, they're all on the internet. Google can help me find them. And so I, I didn't come up with the money. I, I can just have them right in my internet anytime I want them. Learn to discipline your life. Start 
be serious, be committed, be disciplined, and write down what you want God to do. In your life, your daily requests, your family, your friends, your future, begin to discipline your prayer life and then trust God for something big. God can take and use you in a big way if you, small, if you serve him at the beginning of your life in small ways. And God can take a small thing and turn it into a big thing. We prayed for a million dollars that first year. Jerry, a million dollars gets us through about a half a day today. It's about a half, it takes two million dollars a day to run this institution. And when we thought a million dollars, that was bigger. Take about one million a day, one, one million a day. Can you trust God for a million dollars? If you start out for a one, before you know it, it was a million dollars. So some of you need to trust God today for a hundred. And in line, God will give you many answers to prayer. Would you pray with me? Now in your heart, I want you to make a commitment, not to me, but to God. I want you to make a commitment. I will start a prayer list. I will begin disciplining my prayer life. I will start a prayer list and pray from that list each day. If you will, tell God silently in your heart, I will. Father, you've heard the silent response of hearts. Help men and women to be true to their response. I ask in Jesus' name, amen.